I'm Cecilia Prieyo, I'm French and I'm auto-entrepreneur in Riyadh in the tourism sector. I was living in the region, uh, in the UAE, and I was coming a lot to Saudi to visit mainly. And uh, I was like, oh my God, there is so many opportunities uh, here in the country. And I wanted to move, so I just said, let's try. For me, Riyadh, it can be so many different Riyadh. You can have the Riyadh that you want. I liked the fact that it was so dynamic. This is what really uh, brought me to this city because I saw that there, it was so challenging, but at the same time exciting. Everybody in this planet can find his way to live in this city. had the opportunity to travel a lot uh, in Saudi Arabia. I went to Jeddah, Lula, Abha, Khobar, Al Ahsa, a lot of regions. And uh, this is my favorite thing about Saudi, is the fact that it's so big that you can explore and I think you are never tired of traveling in the, in the, in the country and to explore all the regions, the difference in terms of people and culture. I was so surprised to see uh, that even between Saudis, there is different dialect, different culture, different uh, meals, different everything. I had the opportunity to explore uh, Alula deeply. This is the first historic site that I did in Saudi, and I was so surprised to see how many civilizations came to Alula. When I traveled to Alula, it was the point of um, it was the beginning for me of the exploration in Saudi and I think it was also the why I came here because I saw that Saudi was very different comparing to the other countries of the region and you can learn a lot about this here. And then I was so surprised to see also that in Saudi there is a lot of UNESCO sites. Riyadh as a city is very dynamic in terms of events. I am someone who, who likes cultural events mainly. I like to, to go every weekend to explore. So I was very happy to see that Riyadh during winter is very active. Boulevard City, Boulevard World, of course, and also some like temporary events such as Souk Al Walin, for example, that I found very interesting to, to rebuild a souk as it was before. Uh, and I was so surprised to see that it's mainly Saudis who are going there. So as a foreigner, it's even more interesting to go to Riyadh season and to see that it's not only foreigners, which is normal for many countries. But here you can connect very easily with someone and, and, and talk about the cultures. And they are so interested about us. And this is what I like to be able to build bridges very easily. The Riyadh season also, I loved it with so many events in, at Turaif and around. I was surprised about the electronic music. I attended uh, many festivals or events about electronic and you know, my friends back home were so shocked when I posted on Instagram and everybody was asking, is it in Riyadh? Like, because I just arrived, I jumped on, a, on an event and uh, I was shocked to see how many events there is like this. I feel Saudi is very um, is leading in the region in imagining this kind of events in hidden places, or like Al Balad or Alula. Like you want to experience concerts in this kind of thing, in this kind of place. But I didn't do much than uh, electronic music for now, except. Uh, the traditional uh, music concerts that you can find on Funding Day or National Day, these kind of things.
knowing people in Riyadh uh, can be challenging, I think. I was lucky to come with my husband here, so I was not alone. But I think the best way to find people in uh, Riyadh is from work, because you work with people, you have colleagues, and then you get to know more people. But honestly, I think everybody can know uh, so many people in Riyadh and from different nationalities, a different uh, background. And this is what makes Riyadh, I think, very interesting for foreigners. So this is my friend Emily from France. Oh, Emily yes. in Paris. Emily in Paris, ah. but it's Emily in Riyadh. Yes. Now. <laughs> yeah, Emily in Samhania and Felwa Min Abha. Oh, nice yeah. to meet you all. Something that I like the most about uh, Saudi is uh, hospitality. Uh, because I was so shocked at the beginning to see, even not only in Riyadh, in every region, I was invited in a Saudi house. Like, I was just uh, traveling uh, with friends or with my husband in the car, just stopping somewhere. And each time we were stopping, someone was coming and, where are you from? Uh, do you want a tea, a coffee, gahwa, dates? And you know, you, you just uh, realize that uh, we have some stereotypes in Europe that Saudi can be a very a close country and so the people also. So I was happy to, to break the stereotypes uh, here because the hospitality is amazing, I have to say this. And even now I'm living in Riyadh since a long time and I still, I am invited to have coffee and everything and, and the dinner in the houses. And this, I feel it's amazing. I think uh, the culture of Saudi is very rich in terms of food first. I discovered so many things and I was living in the region, so I thought maybe it would be the same, but no. And I discovered that it was even different from different regions. So I like uh, so many different food, kapsa, jarish. I like the Saudi dessert, it's very sweet, but I like it. And also I discovered so many things about the clothes that I felt very interesting that I'm telling also back home which is about the different clothes, traditional clothes that are very different from a region to another. For women mainly, I discovered so many interesting facts about how it was before and uh, the identity also that the clothes are bringing. If I had to choose a similarity between uh, French culture and Saudi culture, could be, first, I think it's very different. Uh, I don't find a lot of similarities and this is what I like, it's because it's very different from my home. But I was surprised to see that one of the Saudi desserts, desserts here is very similar to the crepes that we have, which the French crepes are very famous all over the world. And when I arrived, I was surprised to see that there is small crepes that all Saudis are eating for dessert. And I was like, hmm, this is interesting. <laughs> هذه نقوش القط العسيري آه. آه. هذه نقوش موجودة في جنوب السعودية منطقة عسير آه. ومشهورة هذه النقوش في مجالسهم آه. ينقشونها على الجدار آه. بألوان طبيعية آه. وكل سنة آه. يجتمع النساء في بيوت إحداهن آه. ويعيدون على الألوان يجددون الألوان Hello, Anna Ohib. About uh, Saudi art, I was surprised to see at the beginning when I arrived, I didn't expect much about Saudi art because I didn't know anything about it. And in the, re in the other country of the region, I didn't see a lot. Uh, so my first surprise was about handicrafts because I discovered that there is still in Saudi a lot of women doing handicrafts. And I was surprised, so I started searching and I saw that uh, the art in Saudi is becoming uh, something that the country wants to highlight. So I was very happy to, to know this because I think there is a lot of hidden talents uh, that 
are coming up now and I think we can we can see it in each event also in Riyadh but I did something personally that um, is close to my heart because when I discovered that there were so many um, artistic people very not known yet so as I have a tourism agency in, uh, in, uh, in Saudi but based in Riyadh I have a small office and in this office, I just uh, started a, a souvenir shop. So I am in touch with a lot of artists, mainly women, who are selling their products in this shop. And I, want, I did this to support this woman uh, and for people to find easily some artistic things that they can buy in one place. Hello, I'm so happy because the shop is live. So here it's a souvenir shop with only Saudi made products. And I'm so happy because I am with Felwa and you can buy so many things from her. She's specialized in Asiri painting and palm leaf waving. So join us next week because the shop will be open. Bye. I moved to the UAE for a professional opportunity uh, in the energy sector, but I started having a passion about tourism and it's mainly thanks to the region because I didn't know anything about it. I'm very curious. I started traveling around with friends and I discovered that I didn't know anything about the region. So I started uh, traveling a lot and I started feeling that I wanted to have a project so I started a small uh, tourism agency in the UAE and the goal was to build bridges between the foreigners and the Emirates. But in the meantime, I was coming a lot to Saudi uh, to discover what is this neighbor country which is very different. And I discovered that there were so many things in terms of tourism. And I was like, maybe I should move uh, to see what there is as a tourism opportunities. And I felt this is here that I have to have my project because in the UAE it was still working with my partner, she's still there. And I started meeting a lot of people from the tourism sector and I had an, an amazing opportunity. I met um, my Saudi partner. Uh, we are now three in this business, so two French and one Saudi. And we just uh, launched Bonjour Saudi, which is a tourism agency for foreigners to come to discover Saudi through our lens, which is uh, through Saudis. So we create itineraries for people to know Saudi through Saudi guides, Saudi artists, uh, Saudi houses in the whole Saudi, not only in Riyadh. So this is now my career because I don't have anymore my, my job. I'm focusing mainly on my business. And the goal is to show to the world our vision of Saudi and to organize impactful events for residents and companies. For my business, it's, I don't have a typical day, but I have offices. So I'm going every day to Diria, which is where we are based as, a Saudi, as Bonjour Saudi office. Uh, we, have, uh, we have partnership with the neighborhood, so we create events with them. But my job is to, to develop the business. So I am in contact with a lot of people uh, in Saudi, not only from the tourism sector, but a lot of companies to organize events for them that would be very different. For example, we organize team buildings and in these team buildings, there will be a Saudi artist coming to show the Saudi culture to them. So my day is very different because I am in a stage of developing a business and I'm happy that I am an entrepreneur in Saudi because all the doors are very open and I'm very thankful for this. I think the, what is amazing here is that you can have opportunities that you I will not have in Europe, honestly, and that you can just uh, have so many nationalities and meet and exchange and make events together. So I feel very active and I feel very lucky also to have every day a new experience. And this is my feeling now, like this month in particular, because I just launched everything now. I'm very lucky to be in this country now of this change.
My favorite hobby is traveling and exploring. I like to explore always new places outside Riyadh, of course, but also in Riyadh. Uh, I like to escape the city. I am a city girl, 100%, but we all need some breaks. So I like to, as I, as I said in the desert, going and sitting, but I like also closer to Riyadh, just to go to some farms. And uh, I'm very lucky to work with uh, many farm owners to organize some events. So I like to explore all the farms around Riyadh to see if we can make events, but also just to chill, to walk. I, sometimes I walk also in the farms with my friends, my team, everybody. And uh, because I like to explore, because I'm posting a lot on social media, I have a page where I post about everything that I discover. I think it's interesting for people to know from others what we discover, because there is so many places and hidden gems, I would say, I like to call. And I like to be like the hidden gem uh, person. If I had to choose one memorable or unique experience in Saudi Arabia, honestly, I have just one who just uh, popped uh, in my head, which is in Abha. So with my husband, we went to the south of Saudi with no expectation because I didn't know exactly what to expect. And it's not yet a very touristic place. And I was surprised how in Rijal Alma and even in Abha, I met so many amazing people who uh, invited me, each one of them in their house, but even in Rijal Alma, which is an old village and it was for National Day. And we were the only non-Saudi of the events because we were just walking around the village and they all told us you need to come tonight there is a party and we were like a party like what kind of party so we said okay we will go and it was really like back like in france there is some small villages that are doing some parties it was very similar by the way so very local people and doing a show uh, like uh, very traditional dances and everybody brought us some food, traditional food, tea, coffee to watch the show. But I didn't know that we will experience a city that we never went there to be that in one day we knew everything with locals, very open-minded, even in the streets. You know, it's not that obvious. And uh, so this is my most unique experience in Saudi, I think. Of course, I spend time at home because sometimes it's needed also. I don't, I don't like, I'm not someone who is staying at home, but sometimes I like just to chill and to uh, make uh, something to eat, uh, like uh, crepes, for example, uh, from France, because sometimes I miss home. <laughs> My mom is doing a lot of crepes, so uh, I like to, to just uh, do this uh, and chill and uh, have like watch a movie or read a book or something but I don't have a lot of time so this is not really my daily life but I try to do it to recharge. I had to leave Saudi, I think I would miss uh, the way of life. I think if you ask me what I would miss the more, it's the most is the people because every day I'm meeting someone and I'm keeping, uh, it's very easy I feel here to to keep the contact and to then have a, like, uh, a friendship. It's, I feel it's very easy with Saudis. Donc si j'avais un message à délivrer euh, à mes amis, à ma famille, euh, à, aux Français, on va dire, euh, euh, sur l'Arabie, 
c'est que je sais que ce n'est pas un pays qu'on visite euh, encore euh, depuis la France. Euh, parce qu'il y a beaucoup de préjugés, de, de clichés aussi sur le pays. Euh, mais je dirais qu'aujourd'hui, c'est un pays auquel euh, on doit donner une chance pour visiter euh, parce que c'est une culture qu'on ne connaît pas euh, en France et en Europe majoritairement. Et donc, je pense que malgré tout ce qu'on entend sur le pays, qu'on aime ou qu'on n'aime pas, c'est un pays qu'on doit visiter pour le comprendre, pour l'analyser euh, et pour l'aimer ou pas.